Top 10 Dark Moments of Spider-Man, the animated series. Everyone loves the friendly neighbor Spider. In the 90s cartoon, Spider-Man, the animated series, has been vital in strengthening the love for Spider-Man in the hearts of many. It ran for five seasons and managed to adapt several interesting arcs from Marvel's Spider-Man comics, such as the one with Green Goblin, Hydro-Man, Eddie Brock's Venom, and the Man-Spider. As you may all know, Peter Parker gets bitten by a radioactive spider, turns into Spider-Man, dates Mary Jane, fights off enemies, and struggles with balancing his personal life with his superhero life, while working as a freelance photographer. However, several episodes from the series have strayed from the lighthearted nature of Spider-Man and taken a dive into darker themes with sinister villains, failed clonings, and Spider-Man mutating into evil creatures. With one of the most versatile storylines, it is easy to understand why Spider-Man is the highest grossing superhero from Marvel. Since Spider-Man had the quintessential sad superhero origin story, as an orphan who had to see his beloved uncle die watching a sad Spidey isn't as out of character as many Marvel newbies might think it is. In this video, we will talk about some of our top picks from the Spider-Man animated series that have tugged on our heartstrings a little more than they should've. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Spider-Man turns into Man-Spider. Spider-Man animated series. Neogenic Nightmare. Morbius. Enter the Punisher. Duel of the Hunters. Plagued by a mutation disease, Spider-Man reaches out to Dr. Mariah Crawford for a cure. He explains his symptoms of pain to her, and he is pleasantly surprised when Crawford reveals that she has developed a serum that could normalize his blood cells once again. But it would also remove his spider powers. The serum could remove your spider powers or destroy you. She asks him to wait until the completion of the serum, but Spider-Man begins to smash through her lab, consumed by the mutation in place. In the end, he takes the serum with himself, even though Crawford mentions how dangerous it may be. I think this serum could be a big mistake. I'll be careful. Peter Parker goes to the ESU with the serum, intending to test it on his blood externally. He keeps it inside his locker, but he was oblivious to the fact that Michael Morbius was spying on him. The two were against one another in a neogenics competition. After analyzing the serum, Morbius believes that the formulation will strengthen a person and subsequently cause Peter to win over him. He steals some equipment from the lab for his research under the excuse that he wants to cure the disease in his hometown. He uses his recombinator to study the sample, but a vampire bat flies into it. Morbius tries to get rid of that bat, but it bites him. With the effects of the serum and recombinator in place, Morbius mutates into a vampirish creature after being bitten. As a result, he begins to crave blood and attacks people for it. Spider-Man tries to stop him, but after finding out about it being Morbius, realizes that they were in a similar problem. Morbius is in the same neogenic nightmare I'm in. I can't save myself. At least I can try to save him. They fight again after individual interactions with Felicia. As the sun rises, Morbius turns back to his human form. He is taken to the hospital, but on regaining his consciousness, turns into a vampire and flies away. Peter continues to feel pain and grows four new arms due to his condition. Aunt May suspects something is wrong, but in the end, assumes that Peter must be out. Peter realizes that he shouldn't have gone against the advice of Dr. Crawford and should have waited before taking the serum. After Mary Jane calls for a date, finds himself in a tough spot and flees to avoid her. Michael Morbius is on the loose, killing for blood. Spider-Man is declared a criminal as he was responsible for taking Morbius to the hospital, so Spider-Man was held accountable for him missing. The media confuses Morbius with Spider-Man when the former appears outside the hospital. Spider-Man reaches the scene to fight Morbius, who is backed up by the Punisher. Spider-Man is immobilized, but he manages to flee by webbing the Punisher. The three fall into a chase as Spider-Man chases Morbius while being chased by the Punisher. Morbius tries to drain Spider-Man's plasma while looking for a cure for the mutation, but prevents himself from doing so. Punisher fires a rocket launcher at Spider-Man, causing the latter to crash into a warehouse. His mutation gets accelerated, and he turns into a huge humanoid spider called 
the Man Spider. He causes a fire in the warehouse and attacks the Punisher, who manages to escape. As Dr. Crawford hears the news, she contacts Sergei Kravinov and asks him to return to New York City to control Spider-Man. Sergei, Spider-Man has mutated. He's dangerous. You must come at once, please. Aunt May and Mary Jane report Peter to be missing. The Punisher and the Man-Spider fight. But before Frank Castle is about to kill Peter, Sergi intervenes and engages the Punisher. Man-Spider and Morbius enter the ESU, but Peter leaves to save Sergi from Punisher, webbing him to a cave's ceiling. In the end, Sergi teams up with the Punisher to take down Man-Spider. Dr. Crawford gives Peter a serum to cure his mutation disease, and he goes back to normal. Hydro, Mary Jane Evaporates, Spider-Man, Animated Series, The Return of Hydro-Man, Part 1 and 2. Mary Jane and Peter go to Niagara Falls for a delayed honeymoon celebration. MJ is plagued by a nightmare which worries Peter. The two board the boat and share a sweet moment of romance before Peter's spider senses sense some danger. Hydro-Man attacks Peter and MJ is shocked as she witnessed him evaporate into nothing. He tries to pursue MJ once again, hoping to make her his and overpowers Spider-Man. Hydro-Man flees with her to New York and Peter chases after them. Peter reaches New York and searches for Mary Jane at every water-based location, but fails to find her. I've got to look everywhere that Hydro-Man might go. Places near water. Terry Lee asks Peter to not intervene as the police take over the case to find Mary Jane. Felicia asks Peter not to give up and then goes on an individual hunt for Mary Jane by herself after turning into the black cat. Spider-Man steals a sample from Terry Lee and analyzes it himself to find the geographical location of Mary Jane. On noticing unrefined hydrocarbons, Peter realizes where Mary Jane has been taken. He goes to an oil drill and finds them. Black Cat catches up to Spider-Man. Hydro-Man chases Mary Jane, but Spider-Man reaches them in time and kicks him into the water. The two then begin to fight. <laughs> Spider-Man freezes Hydro-Man with his web fluid and takes the opportunity to get Mary Jane to safety, but Hydro-Man breaks out of it soon. He then gets Spider-Man trapped in the steel structures and breaks the fortress. Black Cat saves Spider-Man from being electrocuted, but Hydro-Man had already escaped in the meantime. Cat, Mary Jane gets arrested for stealing a boat with which she arrives on shore. Hydro-Man attacks the police station and MJ flees. She uses chemicals from a storeroom to send out red fumes for Peter to track her down. Spider-Man and Black Cat arrive and fight Hydro-Man. Hydro-Man turns his water arms into a drill to kill Spider-Man. Turns out Mary Jane has the same powers as him and she knocks him away from Peter using her newfound Hydro power. She goes to Terry Lee who investigates the matter. Peter takes MJ to Dr. Kurt Connors, and he tries to unearth her repressed memories about the powers via hypnosis. During the hypnosis, she sees the same events as the nightmare that has been bothering her. Where she drowns, is chased by an eye, confronts a clown, and finds herself on a pirate ship. Miles Warren offers to test on Hydro Man as he has trouble rematerializing but he denies and spies on Aunt May instead. He then uses the intel from Aunt May's phone conversation to find Peter and MJ and attacks them. She materializes into water against her will and Peter realizes he has to decode her dream if he wants to save her. He goes to a theme restaurant with a pirate ship in his mind where the receptionist is a character who has appeared in her dream. Peter Parker speaks to him and has a realization, tracks down the wedding dress image to a wedding cake and the clown to a toy shop. He finds a clown toy when a robot with laser eyes attacks him. He then finds a tunnel and correlates the light at the end to the eye. MJ is taken to a lab 
which she recognizes from her dream. Spider-Man reaches the lab and attacks Hydro-Man. Mary Jane begins to attack as well, but cannot go on longer. Miles Warren appears, and Spider-Man mentions how his cloning experiments were banned. The scientist talks about the Hydro-Man here as just a clone, and in the end, reveals how Mary Jane is also a clone, made for Hydro-Man from a sample of her hair and a drop from Hydro-Man himself. Hydro-Man begins to destroy the place and then begins to evaporate. MJ faces something similar. Peter is distraught, but she tells him that Mary Jane loves Peter a lot. She evaporates while Warren gets a sample from Spider-Man's suit to clone. Spider-Man comes across Madam Web, who tells him that she knew where Mary Jane was, and then she sends him off to another dimension. You're the main course. Spider-Man almost kills Shocker. Spider-Man, the animated series. The Alien Costume, part one, two, and three. Astronauts Paul Stevenson and John Jameson discover Prometheum X, a fissionable material. They also pick up a fluid alien life form accidentally. While landing at the JFK airport, the alien attacks them and they crash into the George Washington Bridge. Rhino is sent by Kingpin to retrieve the new material, Prometheum X. Spider-Man arrives to save the day, but is attacked by Rhino, who flees in the end. Eddie Brock witnesses the entire incident, but for spicy journalism reasons, reports to J. Jonah Jameson that the shuttle was robbed by Spider-Man. I'm gonna believe this, JJ. I saw Spider-Man stealing something from the shuttle. Meanwhile, the black fluid sticks to the spider suit, while Parker is oblivious to a $1 million bounty being attached to his head. As Peter sleeps, the black fluid attaches itself to him, and as he wakes up, he finds himself atop a skyscraper, sporting a black spider suit. People try to capture him for the million dollar reward, and Peter discovers that his powers were heightened in the black suit. He tracks down Rhino and manages to overpower Rhino with his enhanced powers. I gotta polish my horn. He almost kills Rhino, but realizes that the costume had also increased his aggression, so he stops himself. Meanwhile, the Kingpin had already gotten his hands on the Prometheum X. Thanks to Rhino, Peter realizes that despite being powerful, the black suit had a weak point, which happened to be intense sound. At the same time, Jameson discovers Eddie Brock's lie about Rhino being absent during the shuttle robbery. He calls off the bounty on Spider-Man and prompts to fire Eddie. When Kingpin hears that Jameson has called off the bounty, he sends Shocker to kill Eddie Brock so that no one is able to trace the robbery back to him. Dr. Connors tests Peter's new black suit and discovers that it is a symbiote, living organisms which binds itself to hosts for survival. He asks Spider-Man to remove it as the symbiote would replace the host, but Peter is reluctant to do so due to its perks. You're going, you've got to get that suit off! I can't, not yet. There's some things I have to take care of first. Shocker and Brock come face to face, but Spider-Man intervenes to help Brock escape. Shocker flees as well, but Spider-Man manages to get his hands on the Prometheum X. He takes it home and analyzes it, making quite an interesting discovery. Smith plans to get Shocker to kidnap John Jameson and hold him at ransom for the Prometheum X. As per Kingpin's orders, Spider-Man fights Shocker and almost kills him, but in the end, uses his web to prevent him from having a lethal fall. Brock interferes and gets webbed in the process. As the church bell rings, Spider-Man separates himself from the symbiote using the intense sound. It leaves his body and slithers into the floor cracks. It ends up bonding with Eddie Brock. Spider-Man gets ambushed by Shocker and Rhino and is subsequently buried under a pile of rubble. However, Venom, aka Eddie Brock, infused with the symbiote, enters the scene, webs them up, fights Spider-Man, unmasks him, and threatens to reveal his identity for vengeance. Spider-Man flees, but Venom follows suit. In the end, Spider-Man lures Venom into John Jameson's space probe launch site. The nose from it, blasting off forces, turns out to be Spider-Man's weapon in the fight, as he uses it to separate Brock from the symbiote. He webs it to the probe and sends it back to outer space. Freak. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. 
Venom Dies a Hero, Spider-Man, the Animated Series, Venom Returns, Cletus Cassidy is a wanted criminal holed up in a building infiltrated by the police. As Spider-Man arrives, Cassidy activates a bomb set to detonate in 30 seconds, obliterating everything within its 200 meter range. Spider-Man throws the bomb high up in the air, causing the explosion to cause minimal damage. Cassidy is taken to custody. Madam Webb contacts Spider-Man and warns him of a looming threat about an unstoppable evil who Spider-Man was about to confront. The evil you will soon confront will be unstoppable. An asteroid crashes into Central Park. A nearby couple witnessed it and near the mass out of curiosity. The Venom symbiote appears in front of them and attacks them. In Ravencroft, Eddie Brock speaks to Dr. Ashley Kafka and talks about how Spider-Man ruined his life by being the root cause that got Eddie fired. After the therapy session, Eddie sees Cassidy as the latter gets locked in the cell beside his. The two immediately begin to dislike one another. Meanwhile, Dormammu talks to Baron Mordo and tells him about their plan of sending the symbiote back on Earth being a success. Mordo is ordered to contact Eddie to reunite him with the symbiote once again. After Mordo talks to Eddie about the plan, Eddie agrees to serve Dormammu in return for a reunion with the symbiote. Okay, you got a deal. Just tell me what I have to do. Peter, Curtis Connors, and Deborah Whitman visit Stark Enterprises to attend a demonstration about interdimensional technology, hosted by none other than Tony Stark. Eddie Brock reunites with the symbiote and becomes Venom one more time. With his powers, he manages to break out of jail and meets up with Dormammu. He learns about how Mordo guided the probe with the symbiote back to Earth and orders Eddie to infiltrate Stark Enterprises and retrieve the interdimensional probe. Venom executes Dormammu's orders and intervenes during the demonstration. He tried to steal the interdimensional probe, but the presence of Spider-Man and War Machine hinders his plan. They engage in a fight, and Dormammu begins to worry that Venom will fail at securing the interdimensional probe. Turns out, there was another symbiote in outer space as this one had reproduced. He takes it to Ravencroft by hypnotizing the temporary host. The symbiote meets Cassidy and Mordo, offers the former another symbiote, as Cassidy wanted this extra terrestrial power. Cassidy bonds with the symbiote and takes upon the name Carnage. He then assists Venom and acquires the interdimensional probe from Stark Enterprises. You're mine. Morbius goes to sleep. Spider-Man, the animated series. Blade, the vampire hunter, the immortal vampire. Michael Morbius is still in the loose as the mutated vampire obsessed with blood and plasma. As he drains a victim, Spider-Man interrupts, and the two fight when Blade the Vampire Hunter joins it, trying to kill Morbius, who flees. Blade pursues him and tries to destroy Morbius, but Spider-Man stops him. Blade fights Spider-Man as he had read in the newspaper that Spider-Man was likely to be a vampire, so he uses garlic gas on him. But after Spider-Man remains unaffected, Blade realizes that he was not a vampire. However, after the fight ends, Spider-Man's mutation accelerates and visits Dr. Connors for treatment. People of New York attack Spider-Man as they think that he is the one responsible for the plasma victims. Agitated, Spider-Man tries to find Morbius, who ambushes him and tells him how he does not want a cure for his mutation due to his desire for remaining immortal. I'm immortal! He then tries to drain Spider-Man of his plasma. Blade arrives at the nick of time, however, Spider-Man stops Blade again from destroying Morbius. As a result, Blade tries to kill him off, but Spider-Man leaves. Vampire Hunter, Whistler, and Blade team up to take Morbius down, but Spider-Man arrives, engaging Blade in a fight. Whistler settles the dust by explaining Blade's origin to Spider-Man, and Spider-Man explains the mechanism of the Neogenic Recombinator that created the vampire to the others. Blade insists they cannot destroy the device to cure the vampiric mutation in him. Morbius steals the Neogenic Recombinator, but Blade ambushes him. Morbius gains the upper hand over Blade, almost killing him, but Spider-Man joins the battle and the two of them take on Morbius, who wants to use the Recombinator to turn everyone into vampires. The three of them fight as Morbius tries to curate chips that run the Recombinator when Detective Terry Lee arrives at the scene. 
Morbius drops her and flies away. And Blade saves the detective from dying. She intends to arrest Blade, but he flees. Hey! Hey! Great! Now I've lost them all! Morbius escapes from the clutches of Spider-Man, so he teams up with Terry Lee and explains the entire situation to her. Morbius searches for elements for his recombinator at Peter's place and the Daily Bugle. J. Jonah Jameson spots him and inquires why Morbius was searching for Parker. Peter realizes Morbius had been at his place after coming back home. Mary Jane comes over, trying to fix a patch in their relationship involving Felicia Hardy, but Morbius overhears the conversation. As Mary Jane leaves, he confronts Peter but falls victim to the trap set by them when Terry and Blade capture him. However, Morbius escapes again, and this time with Aunt May as his captive. She is insurance until I determine you have given me the right information. No! Blade and Terry's sweet kiss is interrupted by Spider-Man, who is enraged over Morbius kidnapping Aunt May, and breaks his co-workers in heroic actions, ties with Blade. He goes to find Aunt May himself and goes to Felicia's house, hoping to find Morbius. As the vampire arrives, he takes Felicia to his hideout and explains his plan of turning everyone into a vampire. Spider-Man, Blade, and Terry arrive to save Felicia and take down Morbius, but as they crash through the ceiling, the Neogenic Recombinator gets activated. To save Felicia from the blast, Morbius takes it himself, but in the end, gets mutated into an even deadlier vampire-like being. He flies away. Spider-Man rescues his aunt, and Felicia is devastated to learn that Morbius's mutation was irreversible at this point. Meanwhile, Morbius goes into hibernation. Now you're mine. No, you're mine. Ah! Kingpin's origin story: Spider-Man, the animated series, Sins of the Fathers, Part Seven: Man Without Fear. Spider-Man tries to clear Peter Parker's name so he tries to retrieve the data disk that can do so. However, the complex he was in with the Daredevil collapses. He gets the disk and learns from Daredevil that the kingpin is Wilson Fisk, the man who tried to frame Parker. I should tell you who our real adversary is in all this. His name is Wilson Fisk. Unfortunately, federal agents intervene and Spider-Man and the Daredevil are forced to flee. Richard Fisk tells Wilson that Peter Parker has escaped after downloading the evidence that can clear his name. The Kingpin finds himself in a tough, stressful spot, as this could result in him being exposed as a criminal, so he blames Alistair Smith, the one who birthed the idea of making Parker the scapegoat of their plan. May Parker collapses at her home, so the Kingpin sends Chameleon to the hospital. As Peter would show up there hoping to check on his aunt, Chameleon turns into Anna Watson, Meanwhile, Matt Murdock hands the disc over to Agent Choi, which turns out to be a fatal error, as he was oblivious to the agent's affiliation with the Kingpin. She contacts Wilson's son, Richard, and gives him the disc. Detective Terry Lee notices the altercations and believes that Peter was framed, which she happens to be right about. Chameleon, as Anna Watson, kidnaps Peter and Mary Jane as they visit Aunt May. They are taken to Richard's place, who intends to have them killed by suffocating them. Kingpin tells Alistair Smith about his backstory as a crime lord. Smith learns about Fisk's father. Turns out Wilson Fisk had his father killed as he had betrayed him. Peter and Mary Jane suffocate in the suffocation chamber. The Daredevil and Detective Lee save them both. Richard Fisk and Agent Choi are subsequently arrested, but the chameleon manages to escape. However, Spider-Man and the Daredevil pursue his helicopter and the Daredevil fights the Kingpin on reaching Crime Central. You are weak. Together, Spider-Man and the Daredevil manage to overpower the Kingpin, but as Spider-Man exhausts his webbing, the Crime Lord escapes. After the two chase after him again, they realize that the one in the chopper was a disguised chameleon, while the real Kingpin had successfully escaped. However, all is not lost as Spider-Man retrieved the disc that can prove Parker's innocence. The Chameleon, Richard Fisk, and Agent Choi are taken to court and found guilty. The Daredevil asks Spider-Man to stay in New York and fight the Kingpin while he investigates Kingpin's illegal antics with Murdoch in Washington, D.C. for evidence that can get the crime lord busted. Rescuing Beast, Spider-Man, Animated Series, The Mutant Agenda, 
Mutant's Revenge. Spider-Man finds himself in a terrible spot as he suspects that he can mutate into a monster. So he seeks Professor Charles Xavier for a cure. He goes to his school to meet him, but the school's defense system identifies him as a threat and Spider-Man finds himself at a holding chamber. The X-Men arrive at the scene and confront him about his intentions for coming to Xavier's school. Spider-Man escapes and webs the X-Men up. He tries to leave the mansion after wandering about, looking for an exit, but finds himself in the danger room, which was being used by Gambit. The Sentinels attack him and Spider-Man fights them. Heads up, guys! Jean Grey turns it off and Professor X arrives. He ends the fighting and Spider-Man gets the chance to explain the situation. He tells the professor how his mutation problem could mutate him into a dangerous creature. Peter finds himself in another unfortunate situation as Professor X claims to not have a cure for it. A dejected Spider-Man leaves the building when Beast catches up to him and tells him about Herbert Landon from the Brand Corporation is working on a cure. Spider-Man leaves and a team led by Lewald captured the beast as they were in search for a mutant. He's stunned. The next day, the X-Men realize that the beast is missing. Wolverine tracks down his scent and traces the scent of his captors and Spider-Man. He believes that Spider-Man got beast trapped. The Hobgoblin and Herbert Landon meet up, both aware of the plan that Landon is creating a super mutant army for the Kingpin. Hobgoblin threatens to expose Landon's plans of double-crossing the Kingpin unless he pays the Hobgoblin. Landon complies, but tries to kill off the Hobgoblin by destroying the building, but the Goblin escapes. Peter attends the Brand Corporation conference for a cure when the Hobgoblin disrupts it. The two fight one another and the roof begins to shatter. Telekinetic forces stop the roof's debris from decimating Spider-Man and he flees. He finds the Hobgoblin and demands for his intel on Landon. Landon has a hidden agenda. He's going to destroy all mutants. Beast, now captured, has a surprise visitor who is none other than Landon himself. Landon reveals that his cure for mutation actually intends to destroy all mutants, for which Beast was the first test subject. At the same time, Hobgoblin reveals this information to Spider-Man as well. However, Wolverine crashes the party and attacks Spider-Man, asking for Beast's whereabouts. The two fight, and the Hobgoblin prepares a pumpkin bomb to take down the both of them. He uses the bomb as a diversion and enters Landon's building. The security identifies Wolverine as a mutant and tries to launch a missile to eradicate him, but Spider-Man saves him. He reveals Landon's original plan to Wolverine, and the two team up to get to the root of the matter and rescue Beast. They enter Landon's building and fight his men. Hobgoblin downloads Landon's research by hacking into his computer, and Spider-Man and Wolverine arrive in the nick of time, disturbing the experiment. However, Wolverine almost falls victim to Landon's serum. Lewald reports the Kingpin about Landon double-crossing the Crime Lord, as he never wanted to create a mutant's army. Hobgoblin threatens to destroy Landon's life's work by destroying a disc with his research. Landon tries to retrieve the disc, but falls into his own serum, following which Hobgoblin leaves. Spider-Man saves Wolverine from falling into the serum and frees Beast. A mutated Landon appears and begins to absorb the city's electrical energy, growing in size. The X-Men arrive and use the microwave antenna from their ship to retrieve Landon, but he is too heavy. Just too heavy. We're going down. I can't keep her aloft. Genevieve uses telekinesis to save Blackbird, the X-Men's ship, and everyone realizes that she is a mutant who worked with Landon to cure herself of her mutancy. Landon is taken away in an ambulance as his mutancy is reversed. The X-Men and Spider-Man befriend each other. Genevieve is offered to meet up with Professor Xavier while Spider-Man finds out that Dr. Mariah Crawford was back, so he plans to seek her out for a cure. Goblin threatens Aunt May, Spider-Man, Animated Series, Season 3, Final Turning Point. Norman Osborn is pressured by the Kingpin to create the formula for a gas sample that the Kingpin can weaponize for his criminal needs. He threatens Norman by using Harry Osborn 
to blackmail him. Norman gets agitated from the pressure and anxiety and forgets to secure the airline as he works on the sample, which causes an explosion in the Oscorp building following the lethal explosion. Spider-Man arrives and rescues Osborne's partner, Wardell Storm. Goes back inside to find Norman, but is unable to find him. Harry fails to find his father as well and is subsequently saved by Spider-Man. He realizes that the explosion might have killed Norman Osborn and is devastated. Oscorp board members invite Harry to an Oscorp board meeting as he was supposed to succeed Norman Osborn. Harry is angered as he still harbors the hope of Norman being alive as no one had recovered his body. Kingpin contacts Wardell and insists he keep working on the gas. Oscorp board members begin to get kidnapped by a goblin. It also targets J. Jonah Jameson, but Spider-Man intervenes. Green Goblin overpowers the spider's web shooters and kidnaps Jameson. Spider-Man realizes that this new goblin is similar to the Hobgoblin, and the equipment looks like it is manufactured by Oscorp. So he plays detective, goes to the building, and finds Harry rummaging through some papers. Meanwhile, the goblin leaves the building on his glider, and with Harry's resentment towards the board members in mind, deduces that Harry is the Green Goblin. Harry? Is it possible? Spider-Man contacts Detective Terry Lee after more board members get kidnapped. He warns member Anastasia Hardy about it, but is late as the Goblin kidnaps her and Felicia. Spider-Man manages to rescue Felicia, but the Goblin takes Anastasia, intercepts the Kingpin's helicopter, and kidnaps the Crime Lord as well. Peter meets Mary Jane. She tells him about her suspicions regarding their friend Harry being involved in the fiasco. These kidnappings in the news? I think Harry might be involved in them. Peter agrees, but does not accept it in front of her, as he did not want to betray his friend by breaking the trust. She leaves, but he attaches a spider tracer to her so that he can protect her if a goblin Harry attacks. Mary Jane visits Harry at Oscorp as he rummages through the wreckage from the explosion. Suddenly, she loses sight of him, and the green goblin kidnaps her for spying. She is held captive in an underwater fortress alongside several board members from Oscorp. The goblin claims to seek justice for Norman Osborn and tries to flood the building. Spider-Man finds out something is wrong thanks to the tracer on Mary Jane and arrives on time. He frees the hostages and they escape in a submarine. He fights the Green Goblin and unmasks him to find his identity. Turns out to be Norman Osborn himself who reveals to have gained strength from the gas he was manufacturing for the Kingpin. He had taken Hobgoblin's equipment from Oscorp but during the fight his strength wears off. Spider-Man rescues him from the flood and Harry helps Spider-Man out after discovering how Norman had used an underground tunnel to escape. Norman announces his return in public after he recovers. Robbie turns on Spider-Man. Spider-Man, the animated series, Spider Wars, part one. I really, really hate clones. Spider-Man is sent to a different dimension by the Beyonder. On reaching, he finds himself in a dystopian New York that has been leveled and destroyed. Beyonder appears in front of him, and he tells Peter that Spider-Man is responsible for this destruction. Responsible for this devastation! Who? You are Spider-Man. Peter is shocked to hear it. The combined forces of the Green Goblin and the Hobgoblin are responsible for the destruction of the city. J. Jonah Jameson tries to report the incidents, framing Spider-Man to be behind it all, but the goblins attack him. The Hobgoblin drops Robertson from a tall building, and Spider-Man saves him. Robertson accuses Spider-Man of causing this destruction. Spider-Man catches up with the goblins, hoping to make them pay for their crimes, but the goblins claim that they did it under his orders. That's when they talk about this Spider-Man being the other one. They flee with J. Jonah Jameson as their hostage. The Daily Bugle is blown apart. Spider-Carnage attacks Spider-Man. Peter realizes that Spider-Carnage is the one responsible for the dystopian state of New York. He then tells Peter that he despises him because he really, really hates clones. The two fight and Spider-Carnage overpowers Spider-Man, sending him off to another space where Spider-Man meets Beyonder and Madam Web. Madam Web tells Spider-Man that Beyonder is weakened because they were in a different dimension. He then meets five other Spider-Men, the six-armed Spider-Man, the Spider-Man with Doc Ock arms, the Scarlet Spider, the Armored Spider-Man, and the actor Spider-Man who had no superpowers. He learns that they are all Peter Parkers from different dimensions, and that they were all in the dimension of the Scarlet Spider. Spider-Carnage was the twin of the Scarlet Spider, well, a scientific twin, 
Miles Warren had cloned Peter Parker from this dimension, but the clone escaped. The Scarlet Spider thought that he was that clone and changed his identity to not bother Peter Parker. With the help of Dr. Kurt Connors, he learned that he was in fact the real Spider-Man. Following this revelation, the other Spider-Man began to hate him with a burning passion. As the Scarlet Spider tried to stop the Kingpin from creating an interdimensional transporter, his clone intervened and attacked the Scarlet Spider. The carnage appeared from the interdimensional portal. The symbiote bonded with the clone and drove him insane. They learned that Spider Carnage plans to cause an explosion that will destroy all the dimensions, so they must team up to stop it, with the main character Spider-Man as the leader. The destruction had already taken place, but the Beyonder had rolled back time and arrived in this dimension to change the future. They leave to take down Spider Carnage, leaving the actor Spider-Man behind. They fight the Kingpin's pawns. Kingpin notices that there were five Spider-Men and orders the goblins to take over. The goblins reach the base and fight the spiders. The armored Spider-Man gets too overconfident and is sent back to Madam Web by the Green Goblin. The others subdue the goblin and catch up with the Kingpin, Spider Carnage, and Alistair Smith. They fight, but the six-armed Spider-Man mutates into the Man-Spider and begins to attack the other Spider-Men. What did you think of these episodes? Did you enjoy the video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one.